Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day as we celebrate this momentous occasion. Just a quick note, one of the wonderful perks of working here in Hamilton is that we get to listen to the train a few times a day. So we're going to try to get this in before the next train comes in, but we might have to do a moment of silence as the train passes us I by. I really don't think that's going to happen. Oh, well, we have to try. It's like the Oscars, but there's no slapping. Come on, okay. let's go. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. Just over 10 years ago, we cut the ribbon on Stockton's newest location here in Hamilton. The day was cold, for those of you that were here, but the welcome was warm. Since then, Stockton's Kramer Hall and the Noyes Museum of Art have been embraced by this town and beyond. We have the pleasure of supporting students, faculty, staff, and our Hamilton friends and partners, offering academic programs, continuing education, art exhibitions, community meetings, and the list goes on. No, oh, that's not my turn now. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right. For the past 10 years, over 50 curated exhibitions featuring works by artists right here in Hamilton to as far as Syria and Japan and England, focused on important themes like immigration, Black Lives Matter, and climate change. Programming that has included panel discussions, dance, poetry, and film are only a few examples of the joint efforts between the museum and Kramer Hall. The success of Kramer Hall is illustrated by the new public mural just down the street, featuring over 60 portraits from the Hispanic community of Hamilton advancing education, partnership, diversity, and community. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the president of Stockton University, Dr. Harvey Kesselman. Leading under the guiding principle of Students First, Dr. Kesselman presides our Stockton University as the fifth president with beginnings as unique as the university itself Dr. Kesselman is the only sitting university president to have been in the inaugural class of the very institution that he serves, making him the most recognizable alumnus in Stockton history. Throughout his extensive tenure at Stockton, President Kesselman has successfully held leadership positions in every major di uh, division in the university. President Kesselman makes his daily mission to strengthen the value of Stockton's degree. This past fall, we were ranked one of the top 100 schools in U.S. News and World Report, ranking as the best universities nationally. In addition, he has successfully advocated for the increase of state appropriations, which we greatly appreciate, and approve campus capacity, advanced university recognition, and its reputation, increasing the institutional giving, rededication of institutional commitment to the shared governance and transparency and developed a stronger community and regional relationships. In 2018, Stockton opened the doors of our Atlantic City campus to hundreds of new students because Dr. Kesselman's visionary prowess and collaborative nature, he has positioned the Atlantic City campus not only to be a solid anchor institution, but a major economic driver and the educational capital of Southern New Jersey. The entire Stockton University community is very proud to have President Kesselman at the helm of this great institution. So without further ado, please join me in a warm welcome, President Kesselman. I, I think my speech will be shorter than the introduction, so you can, you can relax about that. Um, also, uh, I, I remember, and it really was cold, and I think we were out there, okay, when we opened up um, about 10 years ago, a little bit, I guess, uh, just about 10 years ago. And I, I have the words, but I do want to tell you, I remember, and Charles reminded me, when we were at the crossroads as to whether this was going to happen or not, and I went to the most packed meeting I had ever seen, and there were nothing but red shirts in there because there was all, in addition to deciding whether we were going to be here, there was also a, a teacher's action. And as a result, it was just an incredibly interesting evening. But at the, at the end of it, thanks to Charles and, and, and many others, we were, we were able to make this happen. And this, this is important. This was an important expansion for Stockton. 
And by that I mean, and again, I haven't got to my prepared remarks, but I want to do it because when I saw Charles, it triggered it. Um, we've expanded in other areas, as I think everybody is, is, is aware. But this expansion came as a direct result of a native son, someone who's been in this town, providing the funding in order for us to do this. And that was something unique in the history of Stockton. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask all of you to give just a heartfelt, warm thanks to Charles Kramer. I know he's going to be speaking. And his family, who've also been just as dedicated. So he was part of that. So thank you, of course, for joining Stockton's 10th anniversary celebration of our Kramer Hall instructional site. By the way, I have one more, rib I think, one more ribbon cutting to the end of my presidency, so it's really nice to be here to, 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 to do this. Um, and I was the provost at the time. Anniversaries are always a grand occasion, but 10 years is a special milestone. Achieving such an event is worthy of acknowledgement, and we are glad, and really are glad, so many of our friends and supporters are here to celebrate with us. Now, many of you know that the modern 10th anniversary gift, the modern one, is diamonds. For today's event, however, we did not budget for such an extravagance. And frankly, considering Stockton's close relationship with Charles Kramer, the actual traditional 10-year celebration gift seems more appropriate. And that's aluminum. That's the traditional one. OK? That's right, aluminum. So Charles, instead of a string of diamonds, maybe we'll string together some of your empty soda and beer cans. That would be really, really good from Craver Beverages. But the truth of the matter is, we are in an incredible period, and it demonstrates our commitment to you and your commitment to Stockton. This has been a great partnership for which we are proud. For 10 years, the staff of Kramer Hall and the Mu Noyes Museum of Art of Stockton University have dedicated themselves to making this facility an anchor within the Hamilton community, uniquely combining educational activities and cultural offerings. There are so, so many people who have played a role in Kramer Hall's success. And while we can't thank each and every one of you by name, I'd like to acknowledge the incredible work of Christina Birchler and Michael Cagno in serving as leaders and mentors of this great site. Please give them a warm, warm round of support. There's also a member of our faculty member who's here, a faculty member who's here, and his name is Tom, Dr. Tom Kinsella. Please stand up and be recognized, Tom, for all the work you've done here. Tom has just been named a distinguished professor Okay, at Stockton, and there are only eight of those at Stockton right now, so kudos on that award, Tom. This is a place, a destination to foster professional and personal growth as community engagement opportunities. Since opening, as you heard, Kramer Hall has hosted nearly 200 academic courses with more than 4,000 total course enrollments. For example, we now have two cohorts of Masters of Arts and Counseling students and two cohorts of Masters of Science in Data Science and Strategic Analytics, something I probably wouldn't even heard of when we first opened up 10 years ago, running simultaneously. Are there any students here today? Raise your hand. All right, warm round of applause for our students. The galleries and classrooms have hosted over 1,000 events, welcoming more than 40,000 guests, students, employees, and community members who have enjoyed exhibitions, workshops, lectures, and panel discussions. Kramer Hall is also a central location for student involvement. Student interns, and get a chance to paint in the front. I think I was the first one who painted in there. If you'll see, if you'll see really poor painting, it was me, uh, number two. Student interns pursuing experience in hospitality, marketing, and the visual arts have honed their problem-solving skills and creative talents in preparation of postgraduate opportunities. With our students, employees, friends, and community partners in attendance, today is the perfect day, and the weather has agreed with that, to reflect on and celebrate how much has been accomplished here at Kramer Hall. It's also a time, and this is what happens at anniversary, it's a time to pause and think about the future. Where will, be, where will we be and where will this place be 10 years from now? No doubt, with continued dedication of our students, faculty, staff, plus our community sponsors, 
who are here too. Okay, the next 10 years will be even more exciting and even more successful. So thank all of you for being here. Thank for your support of Kramer Hall and thanks for your support of Stockton. Go Ospreys. Thank you, Dr. Kesselman. Next, I'd like to introduce Charles Kramer. The Kramer family are major supporters in the town of Hamilton, as well as Stockton University, providing scholarship funds and gifts and serving on the Stockton Foundation, notably helping to establish the Hamilton Area Endowed Scholarship. Mr. Kramer has been a strong supporter of the noise, and for that, I've been internally grateful. Charles Kramer. Uh, everyone knows, uh, I know the one uh, that I want to keep this short because uh, too long is not good, but the uh, fact that I am physically short and that my significant other has told me that uh, I sometimes have a short fuse, I'll keep it short. So I'm honored to be here. Uh, it's really I've been involved for so many years, first with Stockton, uh, got very involved with the noise, uh, had a chance to serve on the foundation and then be president. And it was almost a, um, it was just meant to be, I guess, that uh, when Kramer Beverage moved here in 2001, we, uh, which we're very happy about, uh, I had my, myself very more and more involved in Hamilton. So, when the time came to, that Hamilton and, and then uh, Stockton were trying to get together and um, bring the uh, institution here, I was asked to be, become involved. I was, at that time, I was president of the foundation and president of Kramer Beverage and involved with the noise. It all seemed to make sense. And uh, I'm very happy that with, with a lot of hard work, uh, with the strong assistance of President Kesselman, uh, he came, he was the, the voice of Stockton uh, as far as uh, helping to get the approvals and plus so many people, even uh, I still remember the Mount Carmel Society who I was, I had a lot of friends there I, because of the business for many, many years. They were there in force. It just, it was great. There was just a lot of, uh, of, of support. The, over the past 10 years, I've, you know, watched closely. I've been told, I've seen how much usage Kramer Hall has had in the community. And the combination of being, as was mentioned, an anchor in Hamilton for the, uh, the residents, for the organizations, uh, our own company. We've had meetings here. I, I, uh, the Chamber of Commerce meets here. It's really being utilized at the same time it's a phenomenal inst uh, institution of higher learning. Glad to see all you students here. And I, I did hear about the graduate programs that were taking place, um, uh, uh, which was really exciting because in the, in the very beginning, there was um, concern by some Hamiltonians that they shouldn't come here. Stockton was going to cost this, the town money. It might not work out. There, there were some question marks. I don't think any of that exists today. It's become a complete success. Uh, I was always happy to see that the noise was part of this institution. Um, and I hope many of you have, have, have seen what uh, the art that's been here on display. There's some art there right now. It's great. And uh, overall, it's been a, uh, a terrific experience to uh, be part of this. Um, uh, Kramer Beverage moved here in 2001, and uh, Mark Kramer, my son, who's president of the company, and I, uh, and frankly, most of the, uh, anyone in our company I, that you ever talked to, were all very happy to be here in Hamilton. They've been so supportive, um, the leadership and the community in general. So, in short, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, Thank you for the staff. Oh, and one other thing, interesting. When I first came here, when the building was up, I was blown away by the fact that everything was fully computerized. There was, it was a mini version of being on the campus. And it was, things were dial, dialed in. It, it, 
I, I was really not expecting that. And, and that's continued and grown, and it's, it's really becoming a, an import, import, important part of the college, of the university, and I'm happy to see that. So thank you all, and I was happy, remember when you give it, when you get involved with your time or your money, whatever, you get more back than you give. So, and that's been my case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Please welcome to the podium Dr. Marissa Levy, our Dean of the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences and a tenured professor of criminal justice. We are honored to have Dr. Levy tirelessly advocating for the needs of Kramer Hall. As a dean, she also oversees additional programs housed here within our facility. Dr. Levy? Thank you, Christina. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so pleased to have been uh, given the opportunity to collaborate with the Kramer Hall team. In 2021, when Provost Kahanov made the decision to disperse the centers and campuses within the academic schools, it was a wonder op wonderful opportunity for the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences to work more closely with the facility that houses the counseling program that's within our school. Um, as well as the Child Welfare Training uh, Partnership, which is also located here. The location of Kramer Hall affords our counseling and our data science and strategic analytics students the opportunity to receive a graduate education that is easily accessible from all areas of New Jersey. Furthermore, students in these two fields especially provide services to the local community that are greatly lacking. Counseling, especially, is a profession in high demand and one that is absolutely essential in this part of New Jersey. Many of our students have been fortunate to serve the Hamilton community in internship and practical placements and also upon graduation in their chosen careers. The Kramer Hall team, the staff and faculty who teach here truly embody the students first philosophy uh, that we guide um, all of our students with at our campuses. I would argue they have even surpassed some of our highest expectations. And I'll make a case for that by providing just a few examples of the comments students have left in their evaluations when they exit uh, Kramer Hall at the end of their time here. The first one, Christina, Nick, Chuck, and all of my professors do an excellent job at providing a safe environment to learn. I love being greeted when I walk through the door. After that one, there was a comment, several comments about Chuck being hilarious, so funny, a happy personality, um, and always willing to provide me with things like extension cords when I've forgotten them. <laughs> My only complaint would be that I don't get to spend enough time with this amazing staff. I can't tell you, I, I can't believe that someone would write that about staff at a university. And I think it's amazing that they think about the staff uh, as they're leaving the university. And then, genuinely, this is one of the nicest, cleanest, and warmest buildings I have ever been lucky enough to study in. Please know that you have made it an incredible place, and I am almost sad to leave next semester. And then the last one, of course, love this campus. Obviously, our students are really happy to be here. Our training partnership thrives here. It's been my pleasure to work with this team, and I very much appreciate the donation by Mr. Kramer so that we can keep this campus. Thanks so much for the opportunity. And I'd just like to take a minute. I see some of our faculty here. I'm so happy to see our students here. So if we could just give a round of applause to the faculty and the staff that work here. Thank you. You're not going to get another speech from me. But I just noticed somebody. You know, I was always the front person, uh, and that's the role I had when I was the provost and certainly as, as the president. But there was somebody who was absolutely indispensable at the early years of Kramer Hall, and I just saw her, Dr. Eileen Conran, folks, who is here. Okay, big round of applause for Eileen. Next, I'd like to introduce one of my newest friends here in town, Dr. Johanna Johnson. Dr. Johnson has served on the Stockton University Foundation Board since 2010, previously serving as its chair. She is a founding member of the Stockton Women's Leadership Council and helped establish Stockton Foundation's Hamilton Area Endowed Scholarship. 
without further ado, Dr. Johnson. Good afternoon. It is a beautiful day. I am honored to speak today in celebration of the 10th anniversary of Stockton's Kramer Hall. This building holds a special place in my heart. It is where my Aunt Rose spent many years as a garment worker. She loved working here, especially for Anna Bertino, whom she respected and admired greatly. Aunt Rose would be thrilled to see its new life as part of Stockton University. I'm very proud that Stockton's leadership made the decision to invest in our community. As a Stockton Foundation member, I was here on the opening day of Kramer Hall and had the good fortune of meeting Charles and Lynn Kramer. Though Charles and I serve on the Foundation together, it was here that I had the opportunity to know him better and learn from him. Charles grew up in a culture of philanthropy and has proved the importance of helping others. Together, we embarked upon a campaign to raise $100,000 for an endowment scholarship to benefit Hamilton students who attend Stockton. Through the generosity of Dr. Ed Robleski and his wife, June, along with several others, our goal was met. The scholarship endowment has grown to $102,000, and since 2017, $20,000 has been awarded. With the growing student need, we must do more. I encourage you to use the QR code on today's program to contribute to this scholarship. This is my commercial. It's right there. Kramer Hall is a gem for downtown Hamilton. It is attractive, well-maintained, but it would be just a good-looking building if not for what takes place within its walls. Classes for those pursuing master degrees, cultural activities, varied events, and meetings making it an integral part of our community under the direction of Christine Birchler and her staff. Since the first day the doors were open, Christina, her predecessor, Eileen Conran Folks, and Michael Cagno have impacted our community in many positive ways. Christina is president presently Vice President of the Revitalization Corporation, of which Main Street is a part, and she is a valued member of the leadership team for Hamilton Heart and Soul. She is also a trustee at the Hamilton, for the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce and hosts its meetings. When Stockton Center for Successful Aging, also known as SCOSA, was meeting here regularly, Christina responded to the travel difficulties of the Canoe Club members and moved the meetings here. What's more, she and Michael Cagno, Executive Director of Stockton's Noise Museum, have become involved with Third Thursday events, the Christmas tree lighting, and Easter extravaganza. Michael has brought rotating art exhibits three to four times a year and has managed special exhibits such as the culturally relevant Hispanic heritage and immigration exhibits. Stockton's Kramer Hall staff have invested their time, their talents, greatly benefiting our community and have made lasting friendships as well. So it is fitting to congratulate Stockton's leadership on the 10th anniversary of Kramer Hall and thank Christina, Michael, and the entire staff for enriching our community. We look forward to their continued involvement and many more anniversaries to come. Thank you. Quick side note, did you also know that Chuck is an art curator, an art critic, and the king of hospitality? Chuck, I want to thank you so much for being a friend of the team. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, especially for your commitment to our Hamilton students. We are grateful to have someone here representing the town of Hamilton, and especially those who are involved in changing the lives and culture every single day. It is my great pleasure to welcome Councilman Jonathan Olivio, who serves as the chairperson for the Hamilton Quality of Life Committee. And I can tell you, being involved in many different municipalities in my career, that education in the arts cannot happen without the support of local government. 
Thank you. Thank you first. Thank you very much, Michael, for that wonderful introduction. And uh, on behalf of Mayor Steve DiDonato and Deputy Mayor Tom Gribben, I'd like to thank Stockton University, President Kesselman, uh, for having Hamilton today to be part of the celebration. Uh, when I was asked to speak today, I immediately, as a lifelong Hamiltonian, started to think about the history of the building that is behind us. The original home of Hamilton Shoe Company in the late 1890s, the shoe company grew over time and was instrumental to Hamilton's growth as a community. It later became what many current Hamiltonians know it as, the National Garment Factory. And in the late 50s, 60s, and early 70s, Hamilton had a vibrant textile industry that shipped garments all over the world, and many people were proud to sport a garment that was handmade here in Hamilton from the very building that we stand in front of. However, as the textile industry migrated and the town changed, the building became vacated and ultimately fell into despair. Years later, the town, under the exceptional direction of uh, Mayor Steve DiDonato and our town advocate Jim Donio, who worked to partner with Stockton University to create an adaptive reuse for our historic location. The town was eager to expand its educational opportunities while finding a partner to bolster its vibrant downtown. Many, many conversations, late night work sessions, and tough decisions over a period of years were had to make this co-managed project really become a reality. But the end result has been much more than just a beautiful building with state-of-the-art classrooms and programs. And for me, as again, as I was asked to speak, as I thought about it, there is no doubt that the building is a special and historic is, is a special thing for us. And the historic preservation of it through adaptive reuse to create a vibrant scholastic environment is nothing short of wonderful. Yet all along the way, it's been the people who've made it come together and the people who manage this space who have been the true impact to our community. People like Eileen Conran Folks, Christina Birchler, Michael Cagno, and Nick Zabrowski, and many, many others. The original project members and the current staff of Stockton University are the true major impact to our community. And they have paved the way for a strong relationship that we have built long before this building was built behind us. During the 10 years that we are celebrating today, the town of Hamilton and Stockton University have partnered on various projects surrounding the arts, our environment, the Hamilton Lake, the development of our Main Street organization, as well as the continued growth of our business community. We cannot be more thankful for the university's continued support. As I close, I would like to thank Charles and Lynn Kramer, as well as immediate preceding Stockton President Herman Sotkamp for their leadership and generous support throughout the process of making Stockton's home in Hamilton a reality. I'd also like to thank President Kesselman and all of the other speakers today for their kind words about our community. And I would like to congratulate you for 10 years here in Hamilton, and we wish you many, many more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Oliva. We are beyond thrilled that our students were not only willing to speak, but are excited to be a part of this day with us. Please welcome Jennifer Chung. Jennifer is in her second year of master's in counseling program, getting ready to graduate and do great things with her Stockton degree. Thank you. Hello everyone. Firstly, I'd like to thank all of you for coming to the celebration and being here present with us today. When I first heard of the program being at Kramer Hall, I didn't even know this building existed. All I knew were the two main buildings in Galloway and in Atlantic City. So my first assumption was, great, I'm going to be in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of blueberries because that's what came up when I googled the town. Um, but I truly feel that Kramer Hall is home away from home. From the warm faces that greets me when I come in, mostly Chuck, I'm very glad that he's back, to our amazing professional service specialist, Nick, for adopting our Kramer Hall stray cat buttermilk. Kramer Hall has a warmth I never thought a building could have, not just from the staff that runs it, but the town itself feels like a comforting hug every day 
I drive into town no matter what the season is. Obviously, we all know the food is great. It's partially the reason why I'm, I'm agreeing to talking today. But I truly can't say enough about this place, and I can't wait to see all that it has to come for this building in town. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I don't think anybody could disagree with the food is great. Next, we have Kiana Dunn, an alumna of the Masters in Data, and Sci Data Science and Strategic Analytics, and who is now proudly an adjunct faculty member in that same program. Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations to Kramers Hall's 10-year anniversary. What an accomplishment. My name is Kiana Dunn, and I'm honored to have been invited to share my story as both a student and now faculty. But before I begin, I have a question for you. Let me ask you, have you ever felt stuck in a job that you liked but didn't love, wondering if you could do more to make a difference? Well, that's what led me to Stockton University's Data Science and Strategic Analytics Program, also known as DSSA. I'm happy to share how the program allowed me to follow my passions, make a career transition, and become a data scientist working on projects that make a real difference in the community. In 2018, I started in the DSSA program while working as a clinical scientist at Merck. Although I love my work, I wanted to make a real difference and impact in my community and closer to home. The DSSA program allowed me to transition from one career, pursue my passion, and gain the skills and courage to follow my true interests. The professors, Dr. Russell Manson, Dr. Cliff Baldwin and Professor John Mick were incredibly supportive and encouraged me to be bold when pursuing my ambitions. I remember a time when I was in tears about my final project. And Dr. Manson told me, whether you believe you can or not, you're right. His encouragement gave me the push I needed to overcome obstacles and finish the project even when I doubted myself. At the time, I didn't know he was quoting Henry Ford, but that's a whole nother point. <laughs> but it worked. I am forever grateful for that moment, their guidance, and unwavering support. Thank you. Today, I work on projects that make a real difference in people's lives, such as running disparity studies that ensure small businesses get a fair chance to procure government contracts or working on redistricting efforts that increase the voting power for communities of color. The skills I learned in the DSSA program and elsewhere allow me to produce a genuine impact, and I am thankful for the collective effort that got me here. Now, as an adjunct professor in this master's program, I now have the opportunity to inspire the next generation of data scientists to pursue their passions. Since I know firsthand about the power of this program and how the staff provide continuous encouragement to ensure each student is successful, it is very exciting to be in this position. As I said earlier, I shed a few tears and they helped me through it. And look at me now, I'm a proud faculty member. Full disclosure, the weekly trip I make from Union County to Kramer Hall is a different kind of hall you know, the H-A-U-L. <laughs> but I do it with a smile because I know how much this program has given me, both professionally and personally. Finally, I hope to continue the work that Stockton and the Kramers started here in Hamilton. Thank you for having me. But before I head out, I wanna leave you with this quote by Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done. So remember, anything is possible, so just keep going. Thank you. Thank you, Kiana. It's such a pleasure having you here. Thanks for making the hall. 
Before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to do a quick audible and thank a couple of key individuals. Our name, my name and Christina's name was mentioned quite a few times. However, we are only as good, that's right, we are only as good as our team. And at this moment, I'd like to thank our team, Sarah, Danielle, Genevieve, Nick, Chuck, and Tracy, and Sh Sherry, and Kayla, and Crystal. Thank you, because you make our jobs wonderful and exciting to come each and every day. Thank you. And thank you for, Christina, reminding me of all the names. So now I'm excited to introduce our final speaker, an alum for the counseling program, counseling program, Marie Hayden, a licensed associate counselor. Marie? Good afternoon, everyone. It is my esteemed pleasure to share with you this afternoon in celebrating 10 years an environment for excellence. I migrated in 2018 from Jamaica. When I decided to retool, I knew that online education was not for me. Hence the beginning of my search for in-person programs and all roads led to Stockton University, in particular, Crema Hall. I drove up, the community was being decorated. I thought, really nice, you know, sweet. What am I coming into? Then I came here and I saw Nick. Nick, thank you for being patient with me. That first day I wandered in, I had a ton of questions and I am sure I had the most adorable accent you'd ever heard. <laughs> Probably missed half of what I said, but he was so amazing. I remember being told at the interview that over 300 applications were received. Can you imagine me, 39 and counting, made it with the talented and bright 20 plus year olds. It was like, whoa, big things for me. They are an amazing bunch and they are going to be transforming this profession wholeheartedly. I tested the waters with summer courses and Drs. Smith and Martino sold me on the excellence that Stockton boasts. Now eager to sit with my peers, but COVID had other plans. I found myself in Group B, alternating between classroom sessions and Zoom. Dr. Sapio turned me into an official Zoomer. Things I appreciated most about Kramer Hall and Hamilton, the people, friendly, encouraging, understanding, solution-oriented and practical. Chuck, who anticipated my every need and fed me way too many pieces of chocolate. The smiles from everyone as I entered the building and the professionalism second to none. It felt like they were a family here and I was a welcomed member. The access to faculty. In my 11 years of pursuing higher education opportunities, this was my first time encountering such shared dream and dedication to student outcome by all staff members. Nearing the end of my program, I experienced I experienced one of the hardest times in my life. Dr. Martino, bless her heart. I don't think the staff knew the details of what I was going through, but we came up with a plan and they supported it wholeheartedly. I practiced this so many times without the tears. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, where else can you find a professor who on her own time would organize study sessions with us. Dr. Battle, she battled with us until the very end. I didn't know at the time if I would or could have finished, but look at me now, I made it. Among the things I loved most about this campus and its location was the cleanliness. The museum gave me a space to be and breathe. There were free books and the accessibility to the food all around. There were so many small anecdotes that kept me here. I will forever be thankful for having graced these walls. Accompanying my emails from my Stockton email account is my signature quote. Success means doing the best we can with what we have. Success is doing, not getting. In the trying, not the triumph. 
Success is a personal standard, reaching for the highest that is in us, becoming all that we can be, Zig Ziglar. Thanks to each of you for allowing me to attain my personal standard of success. I zoomed in and zoomed out. In good old Jamaican lingo, walk good. Thank you, Marie, and thank you to this fabulous audience for indulging us as we took the time to shine a well-deserved light on Stockton and Hamilton.